Thank you so much. So I've been hosting this show for many years, um, and it's been fantastic. And we have all these new artists coming in to do the show with us, which is fantastic. So it's very exciting. And I'm going to just jump into it. So, um, so we've been doing the show. I've been doing the show for 26 years, actually, at this point. And um, thank you. <laughs> Soon we'll be old enough to uh, run for the House of Representatives. So um, we have a great show. Let me uh, just introduce everybody who's here. We've got Brina Nunez, <laughs> Kayla E, Robin Smith. Lawrence Lindell, and Jonathan Bayless. And also I should say, if I mispronounce anyone's name, I am really sorry. Um, sometimes when I'm nervous, I just say the wrong thing. So you'll get to see all that. Um, now, uh, I'm gonna start with a short piece that I created, and then we'll get to the real talent. But let's, uh, let's do, uh, and thanks to the tech people for running this from the back. I really appreciate it. I know I gave them a lot to do before the show started. So thank you so much. So here we go. Uh, you'll figure out what this is. And I'll figure out how to use the clicker. Oh, there we go. In Congress, July 4th, 1776, the unanimous declaration of the 13 United States of America When in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another. <laughs> and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitle them. A decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. <laughs> we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by the Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. <laughs> that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. That whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it. and to institute new government, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. To be continued. Thank you so much. You can end that one now. Thanks. I should have warned you I wasn't gonna read the whole thing. We don't have that much time. It's more important that we get to our guests. So uh, let, me, uh, let me introduce our first artist. They are here. Uh, they are a Jamaican cartoonist. Uh, she's known for her mini comic, The Saddest, Angriest Black Girl in Town, and for illustrating the graphic novels Nubia, Real One, and Wash Day Diaries, nominated for uh, an Ignatz. Please welcome Robin Smith, everybody. <laughs> Hi, Robin, how are you? I'm okay, how are you? I'm good, I'll, I'll put my mask back on. I didn't know I was first. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. That's okay. I maybe should have warned you. No, no, I'm not so accusing you of me. Everybody gets to learn the clicker. Just hit the top button, usually works. Okay. Might take two clicks, top but button. you'll be fine. Robin Smith, everybody. Hey. <laughs> Hello. Oh. So just like. <laughs> so just point. Hi. Okay. 
a robin. <laughs> That's cricket. Um, the small things. Oh, I point a lot, actually. Oh, no. Um, OK. <laughs> <laughs> Victory! You have to go get the cricket set. Don't forget the bales. <laughs> click, click, click. Excuse me, young lady, are you selling Aki? Legs together. Hmm. I'm going to beat you this time. Ha 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 children's laughter. <laughs> puck, puck, puck. Hey guys, puck, puck. Look and bring him sister again. <laughs> puck, puck, puck. You can let go. You're hitting it in kind of lean. Puck, 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 puck. Puck. Hmm. See, that's fine. Batting first, second, third. Hmm. Here you go. OK. So let me bat before you. I'll get us a lot of points. So there's less pressure on you. Your turn soon come. Hmm. You, you pants falling down. <laughs> Out. Whack. It's my turn next. Guys, careful. Ugh. This always happens. <laughs> Up next is superstar bowler, Robin Brooks Smith. Woo! <laughs> it's been a while since the West Indies has had a bowler quite like this. Watch out! Gah! Crash. Cha! What happened, Robin? Tiny Cricket is ruined. <laughs> Why tiny? What about real cricket? Flop. Hmm, <laughs> mm, what? Come on, it's my turn. Sorry, Robs, come play when you want. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Robin, I forgot to ask, what table are you at? W80. W80. Thank you, Robin. Our next artist uh, hails from Brooklyn, so he knows who I'm talking about. Uh, he's the author of the autobiographical comic series, So Buttons. In the tradition of Harvey Picard's American Splendor, he matches his stories with groundbreaking artists to capture down-to-earth slices of everyday life Please welcome Jonathan Bayless, everybody. Hello. Hey, everybody. This story comes from So Buttons 10, which was a tribute to the uh, cover, was a tribute to the first Batman comic I ever read, uh, Detective Comics 469. This cover is by Thomas Boatwright. 
So schooled, story, J. Bayless, Art, Summer Pierre. So, I don't know if it's like this everywhere, but in Brooklyn, there are preschool programs for three-year-olds. Seems a little young to me, but fine. And Lucas turned three this year. We dropped him off, him full of happiness. And us, <clears throat> when we picked him up, did you make any friends? No, I didn't make any. Oh, they were already there. <laughs> Nick, there he is before preschool. That's Lucas, Herbie, Abraham, Eisenberg, Bayless. And there he is even more, closer. All right. <laughs> Another one by Summer. So collectible. So. Lucas's class read a book today called Hector the Collector. It's about an acorn collecting dog. When we got home from work, we heard all about it. They asked us what our parents collected. What did you say? Wine bottles! <laughs> Sounds about right. Oh, this is my new issue, uh, So Buttons 13, uh, cover is by Carl Christian Krumpels. It's got a uh, spot gloss on the cover, you should come by Dable W74, come touch it. Okay. Oh, so this one I worked with Rick Parker. Rick Parker is more known for being a letterer, I met him when I was an intern at Marvel Comics. Um, and I wanted to do this story, which is about movie sound effects. So I thought, oh, get a guy who does uh, comic sound effects as well as art. So, once upon a time in Brooklyn. And there's going to be effects. We're going to see how this works here. So, Ennio Morricone, one of the greatest film score composers of all time. All right, kind of hear it. <laughs> Was truly unique and my fave. after John Williams. <laughs> Next. Not merely great in a classical style. Ennio was utterly inventive. How so? Where did that come from? Well, he didn't have the most traditional of backgrounds. He was a fan of John Cage, who used alternative instruments to make sound, music. From its inception, Ennio belonged to an ensemble called The Group and New Consonants. This collective experimented with different sounds and techniques to create notes for avant-garde music. Which inspired him to experiment with his film scores. Oh, that's a good sound effect. <laughs> but when I first saw this film, my now favorite Western, I thought the audio was the work of a sound designer or editor. <laughs> but it wasn't. I learned it was Ennio. He composed it. I thought I couldn't possibly love the guy any more than I did. What a genius. Before he passed, he came to New York to conduct a concert. <laughs> it was all things good, bad, and ugly. Frankly, I didn't love it. They did not keep the trains running for this one. The sound mix was off. There was some bizarre different instrumentation. And there were no accompanying film clips. And I thought that was blasphemous. 
I wanted to scream. I mean, as pictures and words create comics, such is the marriage of music and image for Ennio Morricone. I really wanted to kill the producer of this concert. <laughs> it did not live up to my standards. But what are you gonna do? I've listened to countless scores of his in movie theaters as they were meant to be heard. I'm sad that there won't be any new ones. Ennio Morricone, 1928 to 2020. Last one. This is from, oh, thank you. <laughs> this one is from So Buttons 11. This cover is by Jim Rugg, who uh, did a tribute to a DC comic called Plop. So, I've been a Make-A-Wish volunteer for 20 years. I'll get this out of the way quickly. It's not for terminal kids. It's for kids with life-threatening diseases. Wishes can simply be rewards for making it through life-saving treatment. I mean, there are kids who don't make it, but I don't try to think about it too often, especially since it's not about me, it's about them. But there are a couple who... Anyway, I met this kid who chose a celebrity wish. He wanted to meet Monty Python's John Cleese. My job that day was to simply to escort him to a restaurant where John would meet us. Nice to meet you, that's the kid. It's only a flesh wound. He was a teenager, about the same age I discovered Python myself. Spam, spam, spam. I'm a lumberjack and I'm okay. This is an ex-parrot. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink, say no more. This isn't an argument. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. <laughs> he was most excited to see Cleese, of course, but he was also excited to be in New York City, to be having Sunday brunch and to be eating something with cheese in it. He loved cheese. We were seated by a special table by a window, and soon enough, we saw John Cleese. John was escorted to our table and just started talking. I don't know if John was nervous himself, if he had never done a wish before, felt a need to entertain, etc., but he talked a lot. At six foot five, John was not one of those tall guys that slouched. He held his head high. He was a smart, proud Cambridge guy. He mentioned it a couple of times. <laughs> to the boy's delight, Cleese revealed to him that his family name was actually... Cheese, and he still would be if his dad didn't change it when he enlisted in World War I. Maybe he didn't want to be Swiss cheese. Can I take your order? Have you got anything without spam in it? Now, Billy ordered something cheesy. I think he thought he was getting chunks of cheese, but what he got, oh no, that's okay, go ahead. What he got was a very cheesy but solidly large disc. Not quite a quesadilla, something in that family, but not sliced. Billy didn't really have full use of his hands. He could grab a fork, eat with his hands somewhat, but cutting with a knife was not on the menu. Before I could even think to move, John activated immediately. He looked at the boy's parents straight in the eyes and went into an entertaining monologue about everything. Blah, blah, Python. Blah, blah, Faulty Towers. Blah, 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 Fish Called Wanda. His parents were probably the more appropriate age for a Python fan, and you could assume they instilled their humor into their son. But while John was talking and dazzling, he was cutting the boy's food. Nothing dramatic but one of the most delicate sleight of hand things I've ever seen. It was like he was the boy's own grandfather. Billy noticed, of course, and I noticed. I'm the one telling the story. And when he was done, 
The boy was able to eat no problem, and no one said a word about it. Now, I've escorted a lot of kids on a lot of wishes. There have been baseball players and wrestlers. I'm the game, but you were damn good. So nice to meet you. You're my special little monster. I even did Gaga's first wish. But I had never seen such an intimate personal act from a celebrity to one of my kids. For that, John Cleese will always have a special place in my heart. And I like to imagine him walking away in a particular sort of way. There it is, thanks. Thank you, Jonathan. What's the table again? Uh, W74. W74. Cool. Let's applaud the tables. Um, our next artist is on my list. Uh, oh, here we go. They are all the way here from San Francisco. That could be one of two people. Uh, their work is often self-published through the small press. Uh, she co-founded with her husband, La Laneha House. You will find their comics and publications such as The New Yorker, The Nib, among others. Please welcome Brina Nunez. Ooh. Oh, here we come. Hi. You can applaud while you come up. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't warn you ahead of time. Thanks for coming. I just point, right? <laughs> Hi, y'all. I'm covered in my baby's crumbs from <laughs> feeding her, or Lawrence is feeding her. Um, yeah, how to draw in memoir. This was a submission for a Afro-Latinx anthology that I was asked to contribute to for a friend of mine who's a talented poet. And I originally wanted to bring my instrument, um, my flute, but I had to remember to not leave the baby behind in San Francisco. Um, but yeah, I'll just get on with it. I guess I'll try to make a scrawly sound. <laughs> Why are my knees and elbows never clean? You will never be as beautiful as your mom. No hay negros en El Salvador. I'm having a hard time reading that panel, but. The last one on the top right. Your blood is tainted by your Salvadorian father. Hija, tú necesitas pedir ayuda de Dios. Rough translation. Um, um, my girl, you need to ask help from God. Hey, mami, ¿de dónde eres? Cuba, Puerto Rico. Like, hey, girl, where are you from? Cuba, Puerto Rico. Your hair doesn't look so crazy today. I never see race. Um, I'm pretty much colorblind. More scrawly sounds. Your brother looks ugly. I wish I was lighter like you. Why you sound like a man? You're lost in your life. I think I began to understand how to speak, not with words, but with sound, paint, and ink, when I took myself on a date on a cold autumn in Oakland. Yoshi's, and that night Pharaoh Sanders was playing. It was a full house and I sheepishly glided to a small table. A narrow beam of light was bright enough for me to set up my workshop. As I write this memory, 
the ghost of my former self transcends through time and space. Imagine hearing a sax playing in the background. I'm reliving this moment. I get to own it. Half Moon Bay, California. Each grain of sand carrying, supporting the weight of a holy love I have for this place. Every piece of sand holds it all in one place. Or saxophone <laughs> rhythm. The saxophonist melody was textured like the sun rays, reminding me how I was meant to exist in this world. Splish splash. A tip about writing memoir, write about something that makes you the most uncomfortable. Pshh. Then a day of grieving is dedicated to all parts of the self that wasn't strong enough to contain the downpour. And the refrain of the song ends uh, the show with this message, wherever you are, there is love. Thank you all for coming. <laughs> Table. L14 AB. L, ooh, sorry, L14 AB. Thank you so much. Brina, before I forget, you're the first person ever in Carousel to put an applause sign in the comic. Nicely done. Very nicely done. Got to hand it to you. You're next. Our next artist is in the front row, and while I introduce them, they'll come up. They are... <laughs> uh, she works as a creative director at Fantagraphics and is a recipient of a Princeton Hodder Fellowship. Her experimental graphic memoir, Precious Rubbish, will be published by Fantagraphics in 2025. Kayla E., everybody. Hi, everyone. I have a, I'm going to be pointing a lot, so just bear with me. <clears throat> My name is Kayla E., and I'm a North Carolina-based artist. Uh, today, I'll be reading from Precious Rubbish, my forthcoming book by Fantagraphics, coming 2025. The following excerpt is a self-contained comic called May God Never Waste Your Pain. And just a heads up, some of the themes in this comic are disturbing and there are images of cartoon violence, so I recommend 18 and up audiences. Presenting May God Never Waste Your Pain by Kayla E. Nineteen ninety-eight. Bill worked with my mother at Sack and Save. A few times, she made me hide in the car while she crawled through the bushes, trying to get a clear view into his house while he ate dinner with his family. I have to tell you something. Two thousand fourteen, she called me while puking up bile. At the hospital, the nurse asked if she had any STDs. She turned to me and said, Bill gave me herpes. Remember him? When I left to clean her apartment, all the vegetables I bought her had rotted in the crisper, and her bile was on the counter. They had to remove her gallbladder because it was full of sludge. And it's not something you're going to want to hear. Nineteen ninety nine. My brother and I had to stay quiet at one end of the trailer. We heard voices from the living room and wanted to see who was in our house. Actually, I have to go. From my hiding spot under the kitchen table, I saw my mother on the living room floor with a man I'd never met. 
She was running her fingers through his curly hair. 2015, my mother lived in public housing with a mandatory sign-in sheet. I remember seeing names of random men logged in as her visitors. When I asked her about it, she said they were guys she met on Craigslist. Good grief. Well, you know, maybe I'm better off. Yet, I have such hate for people with moms. I've come up with a ritual that I hope will help. I wake up at dawn and I go to my room of crucifixes. And I get on my knees and choke down the Eucharist. It's my way of deepening the fantasy that Jesus is my mom. By consuming his flesh and drinking his blood, I am baptizing my DNA. I close my eyes and imagine I'm nursing at his breast. I take a deep breath and fall asleep in his arms. My conscience is his voice, sharing maternal wisdom and care. But I'm not at home in my body. My insides feel like they belong to someone else. I wish I could gut myself. Scrape it all out, rip out every bone from every limb and all the blood just empty it out. Take myself apart completely, piece by piece. And wrap my sagging flesh around his corpus. 1998. Visiting my mother at Sack and Save, I was alone in the back while she worked. A man cornered me against the freezer. His hands were pressed against the doors, trapping me. He got so close I could feel his breath against my cheek. Kayla, I need you to wake up. He said, you take good care of your mother, you hear? Don't you disobey her. 2014, after ignoring my calls, she finally picked up. 
She said she was going to a psych ward to meet a man from Craigslist. I was using the bathroom when God gave me a vision. I begged her to turn around and go home. She told me she was hanging up because phones weren't allowed in the facility. He gave me a vision of you getting molested. I couldn't reach her for days. It was important for me because it gave me more grace for you. Thanks so much, y'all. Keep an eye out for Precious Rubbish, forthcoming from Fanographics in 2025. And if you're interested, one more slide. If you're interested in following my work, here are some links, and you can find me at table N12A. Thank you. Kayla E, everybody. Um, now, uh, to quote John Cleese, uh, now for something completely different. Uh, that's kind of what the whole, whole show is built around, every act being <laughs> completely unique. Um, our next artist is an artist, musician, and educator from California who works in many artistic disciplines. He is the co-founder of Laneha House and the author of the upcoming graphic novel, Black Word. I think there's copies here. Is that right? Uh, available, well, right now, uh, from Drawn and Quarterly. Please welcome Lawrence Lindell. There you go. Oh, I should mention there's some video in the keynote. So you'll just have to direct it to go forward. Okay. Yeah. Lawrence, everybody. Hello, hello. Uh, yeah, I kind of cheated and pre recorded my voices because I, I speak really low. So I was like, well, I'll just do it at home and then play it. Uh, there's a video at the end of me performing. I don't think we need to watch that. <laughs> okay. But uh, there's three videos of scenes from my graphic novel, Blackwood. For real, you really are tearing that burger up. <laughs> Y'all not funny. Change it up for date night, bro. But I did. I changed my socks. They yellow.
so what now? I'm glad you asked. He he he. My socks fire. Y'all tripping. First, dance at the rear. Hit up a taco truck. Lactate grip. Then some ice cream. Back to the rear for the drag show. Hydration break. Mo dancing. Late night walk and talk sesh. Final goodbyes. Part ways. I'm at L, 14A, and B.
That's our show, everybody. We made it. And it's not, and we didn't go over time. Brina Nunez, Kayla E., Robin Smith, Lawrence Lindell, Jonathan Bayless. I'm R. Sikoriak. Thanks so much to the tech folks at SPX. This was so complicated, uh, and I, didn't, I made it more complicated for them, that is, by all the instructions. Uh, but you guys were great. Thank you so much for being patient with me. And thanks you all for coming. See you all upstairs. Bye.